Hey, it's Mike Frieder with On-Call Compliance Solutions and another compliance tip of the week, and I'll tell you exactly how excited I am to tell it to you. Just kidding. Hey, NIST SPA 10171 Control 3.4.4. Having a little bit of fun today. Uh, analyze the security impact of changes prior to implementation. Yes, this is called thinking before we speak, right? That's what we teach our kids. Hey, uh, if I was going to give a sample answer to this one, I'd say it's implemented. The security impact of changes to organizational systems are always analyzed prior to implementation. Quarterly risk management meetings allow a designated forum for this activity, and when changes are required, immediately security impact analysis is factored into the organization's incident response plan. What is it that this is really saying? Well, it's really saying, hey, look, when you touch one thing in a system, right, when you make a change, especially when it's security related, you've got to have a mechanism in place, some formal way of analyzing what is the security impact going to be. Otherwise, it's almost guaranteed someone's pants are going to light on fire. So luckily, the government's already figured this stuff out. They're going to stop you from making the mistake ahead of time. And they're telling you, wait, stop, think, and then execute. And that's what this control is really all about. So, hey, the organization's incident response plan uh, or incident response procedure, as I kind of mentioned, uh, I want to take just an extra minute uh, and talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, the organization's incident response procedures are integrated as a ticketing template in the organization's IT ticketing system. Boom, there's a big hint on how to get it done. During the change request process, the requester is required to gain approval for the change prior to the change moving into the planning stage. As part of this approval step, a review of the security impact of the change is considered and documented in the ticket. After review of the ticket is completed, results are documented in the ticket along with the reason for acceptance or rejection of the change request. And there you can demonstrate exactly how your process uh, flows start to finish. If your head is swirling and you're like, what in the world's an incident response plan or what's a ticket? Uh, it might be time to give us a shout, right? So if you're, if you're trying to get compliant with DFARS, NIST SB 100 or CMMC on your own, and you're looking for help, our compliance experts are always on call for you. Visit NIST 800 compliancecom or check out the bio below for links to make life easy. There you can find more information about how we can help, self-schedule time your convenience with one of our compliance experts through any form on the website, or learn more about how we can get this completely done for you uh, in just two to three days. We'll walk you through the whole thing. Love the content we're putting out there for you. Help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button or even better, smash that subscribe button to get that last latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. It's a great way to stay prepared for that upcoming CMMC certification everybody's going to have to eventually get through. And until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there. Hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. And I'll see you on the next one.